Oh, beautiful. So indeed, you're welcome to another beautiful day. So let's quickly go over our VPC and see how we can now start configuring the NAT gateway. Like I said, the NAT gateway will enable us to create a secured um, private link to the VPC, to the instances in the private subnet. And it's a simplified configuration that ensures we have highly availability and we have good security in our VPC because the instances in the private subnet are not expected to have direct communications with the outside net. So that is why we need a NAT gateway to um, create, to be connected down to the private route table and hop to the public subnet. So let's see what we have in here. So we are going down here. We go to the NAT gateway under the VPCs. So let's go to the VPC dashboard. Um, I think I'm going to be recreating everything which we have done, but so we would, uh, or should we clean up first? Okay, let's see how we can clean up first before we, we provision. So for us to clean up the things that we did, firstly, we created an elastic IP. Okay, let's just continue by going down to the NAT. Look at it down, you click the NAT. I'll click the NAT one is already showing here as TMX NAT gateway that we created, but we still have to create another one by coming up to the right hand top and say, create NAT gateway. Then we give it a name. Same this time around, let's go with a, uh, let's go with not less to maintain TMX. All right. TMX not get way two. So like I said, the subnet that we want to be connected to is the public subnet. So this time around, for the sake of this training, instead of going in to connect another NAT gateway to public subnet A, I want to put place it on public subnet B. Okay. So we move down, we keep everything the same. Then we allocate an elastic IP, a new elastic IP. that is being allocated, and then we create the NAT gateway. Now that this NAT gateway is created in the public uh, subnet B, we have to go down, down, and add it, have it connected to a route table. So let's move to our route tables. Can you see the route table? So you get in there. So now you are going to the private route table. Now the private route table is highlighted, is um, being ticked, so which means everything that we are doing here is going in there. So we can from this drop down if we want to edit route or S, two ways you can do it. You click edit route, automatically you edit it. If you want to go and edit, um, Go on to you want to edit a, a subnet that are associated with it. Can you see the subnet showing here? You go there and you click it. But now let's say edit route. That's what we have there. Now we've changed the pattern. So we see that this guy um is already connected. Um let's say let's say we are removing this guy. He's removed, but that's not what we came here to do. We came to add. So, but because it's already there, I don't want an overlap in my side apps. 
So that's why I removed it. So I'm placing it back. So what you did is to pick this, which is from any IP, and you go in to this. Remember, it's a NAT gateway connection that we are putting together. And the NAT gateway we are talking about is the number two that we have created, right? TMX NAT gateway two, all right? So we have it here now. And then we say save. Once we say save, automatically we have our NAT gateway being created. So we move on to um, the NAT gateway to see if it is rightly created. So that is that. Is that. So and another thing you can see our guides here is public and it's available. So another thing that you have to be conversant with, when you're creating the instances into the private sorry the private subnet remember what gives it life is from this NAT gateway so there would be a place where you'll be required to have your connections to the route tables to the NAT gateway so when we're there these NAT gateways that we have created would rather be sitting down there waiting for us or just to have it connected to all right. So you see in the place where we are configuring that gateway, nobody asks you any question about uh, instances. There's no knob for you to connect your instances. So that configuration would rather be done from the instance aspect of it. So we've done this. Let's quickly check the knuckles. Like I said, the knuckles takes care of security at the subnet level. So let's go down. To the network control list. We have talked so much about knuckles, which are a list of uh, IP addresses that you have, and you really do not want any other thing outside that to come in to the subnet. So you are placing a firewall around there, a security garage there to say, okay, guy, you have been red flag, guy, you have been, you know, green flag, come in. And uh, like what I said, in previous days that the um, knuckle is all, always stateless. And what is the meaning of stateless? It is that for every incoming traffic, it has to go through the list, observing the rules that are created in there to see if it will allow or to disallow. Then for every, that's for the inbound, for the outbound, it still will do the same thing to ensure that since traffic going out are still in the uh, list to either allow or disallow. So that is about it. So now let's quickly create it and see how we can uh, um, have some few rules added to it. So the create knuckle is dancing right at the right hand top. So we have that being clicked and always um you always impute the name which is uh, the name you can use your own naming convention that would make you remember it and once you see it you know this is the guy i'm looking for but for me tmx is my guy for this class and always remember the VPC that you would have to attach. They said VPC to use for this knuckle. It is the TMX VPC that we have been working on. So you have this guy attached there, and you see it's clear. So we move down. What do you want to do? Is there anything remaining? I don't want you to add any tags, except you have some tags to add. So you you create go straight up and create. Okay. So you, you've seen our guy, this is our guy. So this is a default um, um, default knuckle given to us by AWS. Let's see how we can rename it. Let's just say it is default, all right? Um, default, oh. I hope the way they spell default here, where I am, is the same with the way you spell yours there. Okay. 
Mm, okay, so we have this. Now, when you, you see, you look at it, you see that the very the four subnets which we created are associated with the default because we hadn't created NACOL at the time that uh, network access control is at the time that the subnets we are created so automatically it will be assigned it to the default but I, I, I'm of the opinion that we take our things back all right let's claim our guys back so let's see if things have changed uh-huh it's free to always use, use this action pane prior to this class I wasn't using it what I do I'll just go down to you can see details right I go down here and I start clicking associate subnet association you see so it's either you're going this way or you want to come right up and right up give, takes you straight up into the editing so let's see subnet association i haven't been clicked oh the four subnets which we created are rightly staring at us so let's see how we can associate them to so now we're taking our guys back you're claiming your property huh you know the default was just keeping it so you say save changes all right so that is what you have done you have your guys can you see that wow this is beautiful and now one thing that we would have to do we want to now bring come up with the ips as regards the traffics that should uh, house that should be allowed in so, so let's go to the inbound let's go to the inbound and see um let's go to the inbound and come up with a list of maybe one or two that should be allowed in. Let's see inbound rules, but let's see this action because now it seems this action is uh, making me to want to have some actions. And so, because I love going down to, to this area before, but since I discovered these actions to nine, I say, let me be of good action. So let's edit inbound. And now we have that loading. Wow, we can see what is showing in here so we now move on to the kind of rules that we want to add by clicking add new rules so for that let's say the rule number would be 100 yeah and 100 for the kind the type let's say the type for the type has to be h okay ttp uh-huh which shows that is port 80 then we we move on to want to leave the source the way it is we want to move on to leave the source the way it is and we now add another rule another rule what we are doing right now is uh, the boundary of ipv4 maybe maximum ipv6 not custom so let's check now we are let's say let's add another rule of one one zero and we do https for the type okay so one of the questions that you're going to be taking somebody should jot it put it in the question uh the chat so you will have it remembered uh the question is for you to go and understand question one understand http uh, which is port 80 https HTTP, which is port 80, HTTPS. So these are the things that I want you to go and understand by. So somebody please write it down and immediately drop it in the group. So that's a take home. Somebody told us yesterday that uh, we should ensure that people are taking things home. That is, I should be taken away after the party. And I looked at it. I said, that's good advice. So let's feed you here and still give you things to take home so you can go enjoy yourself. So we have that done, we've had it. Well, let's go for one more, and this would be, and also check SSH. Let's say this is 120, and um, down to SSH, the type SSH for 22. So we may want to save the inbound here and say we'll leave it here without going further for the sake of training so these are the few lists of ips that have been allowed in right so we move up back to action and take a look at the kind of outbound we may repeat the list in a way that 
the same that is allowed in is still allowed out by our own configuration. But remember uh, the gospel which we preached a few days ago, that security group is not like that. Once it's been allowed in, it's straight up, it can get out. That, that makes it stateful, why the knuckles are stateless. All right? So now edit outbound, good. We have it, so let's add the rules. I'm of the opinion that we just go over same rules which we have starting with base 100 and to the http um, all right so we would uh, add another we have to keep things simple okay but when you are studying you can prove for tougher understanding of things. What I'm giving you here is just the principle and the application. But now you, you, you would by your own self look for areas that you're going to apply this knowledge and to own it. So let's SSH take 120 so um, we can SSH into the instances or maybe the knuckles. All right, that's why we are including SSH. Oh. All right, um, I wouldn't want us to stay too long in evening service. You know, we are at the church this morning, so and now we are still here. So let's save, just save changes without adding much. They say long preaching is not good for evening service, and I agree with them. So now we have our knuckles being configured, subnets associated. Wow, this is great. This is great. So keeping things simple, we still would have to now go over to the instance level, like we said, to create a firewall. This knuckle is for the subnet level. So let's go to the instance level. It will be inside and, and create a firewall, which we call um, the security group. So let's go right on that. OK, let's step out of this and say we're going to secure we can find security group under our VPC dashboard. We move on like this and go to security. And remember, we still have security group in the future. So when we get the time permits, we may talk about it or let it slide. But let's see. We click on security groups. It brings us here. You can see that I already have a default security group. Um, Dancing here. Let me see default. Let me see default. Default. It's dancing here. So saving the name convention. So I'm going to click the create security group here. All right. Always remember to enter the security group name. Okay. Let's see security group is Tmx. Okay, Tmx security group. Anytime you think of security group, think of instances, security group instances. So you may want to use the word SI, okay? Then anytime you think of knuckles, you think of subnet you may want to think of n s because certain times examiners interviewers may want to juggle your understanding of of these to know if you have answered the experience of them so so let's make a description just say for demo ss Demo SSH 
that make this description. And remember, the security group sits in a VPC, and the VPC which we have been working on is TMX. Let's see if we have it here. I know what is already flagged up there is TMX, but we okay, that was in the default. So that you can see our guy here. So we alight our guy, and our guy is rightly seated there. So what is uh, required is for us to leave the rules. Do not add rules now. Just leave the rules and um, go down and create your security, your security group. An elder lady told me something. She said, what you use 22 hours rather to preach, you can see use 25 minutes to preach it and the people will get the message. I said, yeah, but I'm yet to confirm it from you if we are adding value. So I want um, somebody, let me see, I'm, I want to pick the name. Um, Stephen, you're rightly unmuted without uh, permission. So let me assume that you have permitted yourself. So let me know if you are getting value. Are you? Yes, 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 thank you. It's all okay. right, thank you very much. So no too much talk, right? We should get this in too much talk, right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, let's get on to business. So that is about that. That security group is created. It's created. You can see what is showing the permission, the outbound permission, the single outbound permission was added. No permission was given. And uh, this is the name, the security group ID, right? So uh, I'm going to go back to our VPC, our VPC, and we would uh, highlight our VPC and see what we did yesterday. You know, Benjamin came previous, was it previous week or day before yesterday, and took out his microphone and announced louder to us that we have omitted the DNS aspect of it. And yesterday, the opportunity was given to him to um, to demonstrate it, which he demonstrated it pretty well. And we were all happy. And I was grateful that he could get that done. So now we want to see, go back to our VPC, right? And just check to remind ourselves of what Benjamin taught us yesterday and the DNS. So before that, I want to give a, a tiny background, like a pinch of salt of why we have to enable the DNS um, resolution and the DNS host name. You can see it right here, just the way I have it been sampled here. I think I have to increase it a little for those who did not come with their high glasses and yet cannot see as clearly as I do to see it clearly, all right. Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. It's saying that enabling the DNS resolution and DNS host name in AWS enhances the flexibility, the scalability and manageability of your infrastructure. It simplifies the process of assessing resources, improves integration with other AWS services, and provides better security and compliance practices. What is this saying? I want you to know, underline this word with other AWS services. So, which means this is required when we want to when we want to start connecting to Route 53. This is required when we want to do S3. This is required when we want to now start connecting to the website. This is required. You know, yesterday you had to create a website for us through the um, yeah, uh, WordPress. So this is the power of it. That's why we're getting this done now. All right. So that I've said that. 
So I recently discovered that things are going on well for us when we go into actions. And let's see if, if AWS has not uh, removed it. So uh, it's still there. So now we click Edit VPC Settings and move right into it to confirm if what we did yesterday is still intact. Oh, no, you see it's not intact. So as we have been informed, everything must be kept, kept word enabled. Prior times, we have to ensure that everything is kept true, true, true. In a default, they, uh, in a default, they have, they used to be false, false, but we are advised to go in there and ensure that everything is kept true. Okay, but right now AWS got in and it changed everything. And you know, in a single knob, we in everything is being enabled. So what do we do? We come down to say, we come down to say save. And that is for DLN for us to create. What have we just done? We have just created a private zoom on Route 50. Sorry, a private zoom for our VPC. All right, that's what we have just done. So um, what next is on our list? Let's go down to, we could have, could have love us to talk about um, Route 53 private hosted zoom. But that would uh, cost us some money because it's quite expensive. So to save time, since we already have Route 53 down, down below, we when we will do it when we get it. So let's check our list for Route 53 showing in our in our timeline. Boom! Can you see Route 53 here? Yeah? We'll talk about it. But uh, for the uh, benefit of that for some persons who would say let me just take a look at how it looks like all right so maybe now we we go over to let's create another window uh, another tab rather by right clicking here open a new tab and we we'll come in here so we go through the services for route 53 so we just peep in and see the guy and how the guy is doing. So yeah, you can cite your hosted zone and how you can host a website on Amazon and that. But when we come to around 53, you have to relearn it. Okay, sorry. Let's see, route. 53. Yeah. It's loading. Okay, you can see. So now for what we did in the DNS and we want to create and uh, the hosted zone in Route 53, we could have hit this, this, and everything could have been, um, could have hit this. And if we want to register a new domain name, this is the place to come to. And we, we hit it. So today we are not talking about Route 53 that much. So I just wanted us to see. So let's just take a look at the created, uh, create the hosted Soon. And now it works. You can we can now enter the naming convention. The domain name which we use, the domain name maybe which we have maybe TMX if we have already taken it. Uh-huh. And then we we give the description maybe for hosted zone. We give the description here for for hosted zone and the type could have been private hosted zone. Okay, let's just say for hosted for each is and 
we go down always they would ask us to add our vpcs the vpc that we're looking for here now we can say same you can say um i'm coming before we do that we would be required to enter the vpc id where we can go to vpc it's the rvpc Our VPC here, and we copy the VPC ID. If we can, let's click it here and see if we can copy it out and go paste it there by hitting this. We have it copied. We come here, we cannot say we are pasting it here. Show me now. So that has been added. Then we may want to choose the region to something else. Want to choose the region to something else. So maybe if we will be using not Virginia, we look for not. Virginia, US, not Virginia. Okay, US East, not Virginia. So we say this. All right, everything is just pretty easy. And now they say for each VPC that you are associate with the private user, you must set the Amazon VPC settings, which the Amazon VPC settings, what? to and enable DNS support, which we have done. Can you see why we have to go and do that? That's which ben, Benjamin made us to do. It's because of this, you have to enable the DNS hosted names and enable the DNS support to two. Amazon had not edited this because now it's just to click enable. And before that, like I told you, we have to ensure that everything moves away from the default false to, to, the, to true. So that's what they have just said, but thank God we've done it. So now we are required to create uh, the hosted zone in the route 53. But once we click this, we may be required to pay some, some box because we are, <laughs> that is like an hosting for the name which we already have there. So we're required to pay some box. So I would uh, rather encourage us not to go and uh, spend money. But once you click this, you are in, you have done it. Okay. So let's. Um, ensure that we keep the budget pretty low. I started receiving mails from some tiny, tiny charges, but it's still okay. It's worth the sacrifice. So that is about that. Assume in your mind that we have clicked it and it's working well. So let's go back. Let's go back to where we were. So now I want us to talk about, uh, to take a look at the VPC peering. We've been talking about pairing VPCs, which we said is how we connect to VPC using AWS um, network. So, and we have to ensure that the VPCs, the side up of the VPCs are not overlapping. And uh, another thing that I want you to catch is this word, transitive, transitive. VPC pairing is not transitive so which means every vpc connected to the other from both end for them to communicate with one another if per adventure i have vpc a i connect vpc a to vpc b and connect vpc b to vpc c okay that does not bring vpc a and c into relationship that does not bring vpc a to vpc and VPC C into relationship. Someone could say, but they have a mutual VPC, which is B. So which means that traffic could have been easier flowing from one VPC from A to B to C. No, that's why it's not transitive. We would have to ensure that every VPC communication would be privately would be um, dedicatedly be um, 
provisioned. So that is a that is that. So so and for you to get that done, what would you do? You quickly run into the route table and ensure that you reconfigure the route table to send traffic from the VPC that you want uh, to be connected to the other VPC and you have it been routed in the appropriate way. So now let's go to VPC and click uh, and see what is down there for us for the VPC peering. You see um, this is endpoint appearing is okay, peering connection, okay. Now click it, VPC peering connection. So now you go to create VPC, uh, create a peering connection. Always we have our name, which is what you want it to be. But I've chosen my own name, which is Timex peering. The PTMX appearing connection. Okay. Let's see. We have to select the VPC. So, which VPC are we selecting? It's uh, our own VPC, not the default VPC. You can see the CIDR that is associated with it is um, 10.0.0.016. So, that is my own VPC selected. I say leave it in the same region. So what about the acceptor VPC? The acceptor VPC, remember we have two VPCs alone, the default created for, by AWS first and the one TMX which we have created. So let's see, let's make the default the acceptor, all right? Let's check for the CIDR. Wow, this is a different CIDR. So which we using, uh, AWS using create, creating the VPC permit me, sorry. So, what do we do? We say create. Okay. Yeah. You click the create peering connection. So that has been created. So what is remaining is for us to now start looking at the 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 rules okay and then um, what's one major thing is to ensure that the uh, the the vpc the requester is accepted what you have connected you have to ensure that the receptor uh, requester is accepted by going to action and uh, hold on is it pending acceptance Let's alight it. Can you see the request? Uh, it's a pending acceptance, right? So we come in here. We said accept request. We say accept request. And we click accept request. So now it cannot flow, but one thing is still remaining. We still have to go back to the route table and connect it with the through the public route table. So let's go over to our route table, which is here. You can see that it's active now. So let's go to our route table. We go to our route table. So in the route table, which route are we using? We are using the public route. Remember, we are going outside. We're using the public route. And once the public route is at, at uh, highlighted now, okay, let's just say, let's say we click here to see that. Okay. Um, Okay, let's say we go to 
edit route. Now uh, we had we had so what are, what do we want to add? We want to add the CIDR of the default VPC under this um, hard route. So but adventure, you have forgotten the CIDR of the default VPC. What do you do? You have to go over to read and ensure that it, you have it copied and you bring the CIDR in here. Okay, you could have been, you bring the CIDR in here to keep things simple. Keep things simple. Mm, let's go to see our VPC. So what is the cider? This is the cider. Can you see the cider here? Let me see if I can highlight and copy it. Okay, don't worry. Let me come down. If it's showing somewhere here. We have been showing. It's showing here, but I don't think I can copy it directly from there. So let me just right click now. Oh, they didn't let your brother copy it that way. Uh, but we can remember it now. 172.310.016. So we say one one seven two dot thirty one zero dot zero sixteen so what do we do we enter here we what are we looking for we are looking for peering connection so which we we have taken Timex peering connection, right? Okay. And then we now say save. And remember what we talked about that the connection is not transitive. So we have to go over to the default route table also and do the connection. So let's say route table. Sorry, the default, we have to go back to default VPC. Also, um, right. Default VPC because these are the two guys that we are creating. No, 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 go to the route table. Go to the route table because the route table of the default is already connected to the, um, it's already connected to the our own VPC. So we click it. And the direction that we are going to is to edit route. Then we add, we add this. Going back to want to see the side of our, um, our own VPC, so we can route it. We've seen it is 10.0.0.0.16. Coming down shows that it's already connected, right? 
is already connected, but uh, we can change the the target to okay, let's leave this look at and rather add a new one if if it will not give us issue then we go back to pairing connection we save did this save Okay, so there was an error editing routes. All changes have been reverted. Okay, create a route. So we have to go back to re edit the former one, go back. So we can already keep only keep this. Uh, they want us to create a route, but we will not create it. Let's see if we can take this off. If it will let us. Local, let's keep this local. Um, they want us to create another route. Yeah, let's create a route table just to keep uh, Okay, but I think this is how we we got in. We are light at the default route table. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try it with this. And we say uh, edit route. Okay, all right. Now I think we're doing the writing. We're doing the writing now. I think this would work now. Here in connection. I hope it will work. The max here in connection and save. Boom. This is what we are talking about. So having done this, we have our VPC paired, which means our two VPCs can communicate. The default VPC and that of TMX can both communicate. And that is what we have done. And everything is good here. So lastly, let's talk about um, VPC endpoint talking about vpc endpoint the other day we told ourselves that i want to get out of this the vpc endpoint is when we have our vpc communicating with other aws services like uh, cloudwatch s3 dynamo db and and the rest so um The endpoint enables us to communicate to the service through actually within Amazon private network. That is it, within Amazon private network. And we looked at the diagram where we discovered that the endpoint was seated between the, the boundaries of the VPC routing to the Amazon service or the Amazon services. So there are two kinds of VPCs endpoints that we, we should be conversant with. One is the interface. Another one is the gateway, the gateway um, endpoints. The interface, every other services and function, if a VPC con is connecting with every other services and function on Amazon, they use the interface, but S3 and that of um, DynamoDB, they use the gateway. 
when we get there, you will see that that is how it's been configured. And they use the gateway, which actually simplifies everything we must do. Okay, let's go back to the drop down on our left here and see what we have for the endpoint. Let's take endpoint. Then we go over to click create endpoint. So we say TMX, TMX, and Point. It makes end point. All right. Having said that, we we'll go to. Okay, this is a WS services provided by Amazon, right? So if we want to go out of this area, maybe we want to connect to other marketplace services. We tick this. If we want to connect to private link. Um, ready partner, the service with AWS service ready to designate maybe for other um, vendors. Then if we are creating the direct endpoint for an instance, we use the EC2 and, and so on and so forth. But for now, we are working with Amazon services. So you see that Every when you come to the services, we have 227 services that are already showing on our list here. 227 Amazon services that is showing on our list here. Let's check which one is um, is gateway or which one its interface. All these here are gateway. Let's go to S3 and see S3. Okay, you can see that the street is gateway. So the street is it's gateway. All, all of them cloud formation, they are they are um, interface. So let's see if we can alight. Want to, for instance, connect to S3. We have clicked it. We go down to the VPC that you already have, TMX. We pick it here. And what are we doing? We've seen our, um, our route. Uh, um, we have to keep it private because it's a private network we are trying to create into it. So we pick the private. Why won't we have the private? Then we go down. They said when you use an endpoint, the source IP address from your instances in, in your affected subnet for accessing the AWS service in the same region will be private IP address, not public IP address. So existing connection from your affected subnet to your existing connection from your affected subnet to the AWS service that use public IP address may be dropped to ensure that you don't have critical task running when you create a modified endpoint. Can you see that? So if once you are live, you have to ensure that um, you follow this instruction because they said existing connections from your affected subnet will be dropped because all of them that are using public service address may be dropped to ensure that you don't have the critical task running which we do not have any critical tax on. So we may say we give it full full access or, or we say custom. When we say custom, we are required to create a permission, uh, the kind of uh, access policy that we want to give it. So we click uh, use, we say, okay, that's to say custom. We click this and see. 
then we now start configuring the kind of policies. But now this is one of those areas that we would be required to pay money once we provision things, all right? So this is the policy creation pain where you have to create it as you want it. You go over it, the services that you want to take, which we have already maybe, uh, we say S3 bucket, we move on to effect allow principles and so on and so forth. All right, so let's go back to where we were because uh, once we have that, once the policy is created, we will copy the policy. Once the policy is created, we will copy the policy and bring it here, the kind of policy that we need and paste here. Once we paste it here, everything is good. So then we move down to what I've given it full access now. If we say full access, I now click create endpoint. Uh, at this phase of creating endpoint, money can now mm -hmm, read, be reading. So, but I want to move on for your sake to so incur that um, cost because as a, a good friend that you are, you deserve everything good from me. So let's see. Click create. So this is about that. Can you see that our endpoint is created? Now we discover that the service name is S3. So our team X is already connected to the S3 and things are flowing the way it should flow. And we are good, we are good. So um, the status is available and so on and so forth. So this is beautiful. This is all we have for today. So let's um, stop our recording. Let's stop our recording. All right.